Hello maths fans. This is intended to be a quick video to talk about a couple of scales on the slide rule that we haven't looked at before. The log log scale down here on the bottom of this Thornton P221. These are incredibly useful for a whole bunch of things. So I thought I'd just talk about what they are and use them to show the difference between the arithmetic mean and the geometric mean. So here we go, we've got these log log scales on the bottom. I thought they were something in Welsh at first because of the double L, but they are for raising numbers to a certain power. And you can see at the end there we've got e to the x, e to the 0.1x, and e to the 0.01x. And they lap, so the numbers that you can raise run from 1.01 all the way to the end of that scale, 1.10, and then they start again on the other side, 1.11, and so on, and so on, and so on, all the way up to about 20,000. They also run off the bottom of that scale onto these scales in red at the top, which are e to the minus x. So that's the equivalent of e to the 1 over x. They're a little more complicated to use, which is why they're in red for danger. Anyway, let's go back to these ones on the bottom here. And you can use these scales to raise any number there to a power. So for example, let's pick 3. So we find 3 on LL3. We move our cursor there. And we set that against C1. So that's what we're going to raise. Excuse my cursor positioning, I'm doing this looking down over the tripod. OK, so let's do 3 squared. You can read down there, that's quite clearly 9. 3 cubed. We slide our cursor along to 3, and we can read off 27. If we raise our number to the power 4, 3 to the 4, that's 81. And then if we raise it to the power of 5, we should be able to read off there about 243. So you get the idea. You can also do root n. So for example, we've got our number there, 243. There's the power 5, so we're looking at the root 5 of 243. We just follow it back and we look for C1, and we read off 3. So that's how you find the nth root of a number. You set the cursor on the bottom there, run off and find where it's come from. So these scales do link up with one another. If you run off the end of one, you go on to the next one. So I'll try and make that a bit clearer. You'll see you've got e to the x, e to the 0.1x, and e to the 0.01x. As you know if you've seen my other slide rule videos, there's no means of differentiating a decimal point on the slide rule. So that 1.1 could be 1.1, or it could be 110, or a whole bunch of other stuff. So you need to be a little bit sensible when you're reading off the numbers that you're generating. So for an example, let's pick 1.3. Now we'll find 1.3 down here on our scale. Let's set our cursor. Let's say we want to find out 1.3 squared. So we set that against C1. And we read off the value 2. Now we've not done anything particularly wild there, so we read it off on the same scale as 1.69. But what if we wanted to do 1.3 to the power 20? So what are we doing? Instead of being on the same scale, we're raising it by a power 10 times what we've got. So we actually jump up onto the next scale. So 1.3 to 
the power of 20. We're actually looking up on the next line at the top there, somewhere in the 190 region, 190.05 actually. What about if we wanted to do 1.3 to the power 0 0.2? actually dropping down by a magnitude of a power of 10 down to that one. So same cursor line but dropping down to the scale on the bottom 1.3 to the power 0.2 is 1.05 something. It's thereabouts you see so you can you can travel between the scales. So I mentioned earlier you can use this to find roots. So let's find root 5, 250. So we find 250, that's around here, oh, on the top scale. Root 5, so we find our power on the C scale and line it up with the cursor. That's our destination. Let's find out where that's come from. So we shoot back down to C1. And we haven't done anything crazy to the power, so we're still reading off on that top scale. 3.02 That's all well and good. What if we wanted to find the root 7 of 250? So we find 250 again and we set our cursor point there. We line up 7 as our power and then we slide off to find out where Ah, so we're off the end of that scale, so we need to drop down the scale underneath it. So let's go back to our cursor point at the other end, at the 10, and let's drop it down and see what we've got on the line underneath. Well, that's 2.2. .2. You see, you can move freely between scales as long as you know what you're doing and you keep track of that decimal point. Likewise, if you're going up, uh, let's look at 1.3 again. Let's find him on that middle line. Let's say we wanted to raise 1.3 to the power of 8. everything up and we want to find 8 well we're off the scale so let's look down under our cursor point at 1 and read up the next scale oh I beg your pardon I've done that wrong 1.3 to the 8, oh, of course we haven't got the 8 on there, so we have to shoot our cursor point back to C10. Then we can find the power of 8, which is itself just over 8, it's 8.15. Sorry if that was confusing, but I hope you can see the point. You can travel between those scales. OK, so let's use that to talk about the difference between an arithmetic mean and a geometric mean. The arithmetic mean is the mean that we're all taught in school. That's where you take a bunch of numbers, you add them up, and then you divide by how many numbers you have. So let's get a data set here. OK, 
Okay, so you'll notice that's not a brilliant data set because we've got a couple of large outliers there. We've got the 10 and the 12, which don't make that a great data set. Anyway, total of all that lot, take my word for it, is 32.8. And there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 data points. So our arithmetic mean is 32.8 divided by 9 which is, using the good old C and D scales, 31, 32.8 divided by 9, following that cursor point, Three point six four. So that's not a bad mean, but you can see it's been skewed slightly by the presence of that 10 and the 12. A geometric mean slightly overcomes outliers, like those two data points, because it takes the nth root of the product of n numbers. So you times all these numbers together and then take the nth root and that does give you a mean value more in common with the modal value that you've got from that data set. So let's work that out and see how it differs from the arithmetic mean. So first of all we have to multiply all those numbers together. Now if you've watched my previous video you'll know that it's sometimes difficult to keep track of the decimal point on slide rules. You have to kind of know how big the number is that you're generating and work out the decimal point accordingly. And there is a way of doing that. You look at the size of the numbers that you're multiplying and you give them a value. So any number with one figure before the decimal point is a number having a value of one these numbers down here, because they have two figures before the decimal point, have a value of 2. And you add up the size of the number you expect to have as your product. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we're expecting an 11-digit number from our multiplication. However, every time the slide rule extends to the right, we multiply 1 from our expected size. So I'll do this very quickly because I've already explained it in another video and hopefully we'll get a correct answer. So we've started off with the cursor point at 1.5 and we're going to multiply that by 1.3. Now straight away the slide has extended out to the side so I'll make a note of that. times 1.3 times 2.1 that's shot the slide out to the side again so we'll take note of that times 1.4 that has gone out to the side again times 1.6 again that's gone out to the side times 1.4 we're running out of space so we'll do that so that's not sticking out to the side times 10 that is sticking out to the side times 1.5 again that's out to the side times 1.2 
and that's out to the side again. And we read off our value of 2, 3, 1, one something or other. Now, we're expecting 11, but we're minusing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we have a four-digit number. I've done this earlier, and I can tell you it's 231.55. So we have nine data points. We want root 9 of that value there, 2311.55, 2311. Point five five. So we're up into this region of e to the x. There's our thousand. There's our two thousand. Our two thousand three hundred is somewhere. It's a little bit hard to see. One, two, three, just over there. And we want root nine. So we shoot that as our power. And we travel down to the end to find the origin. It's off the end. So we go back up to the top end of the scale. And instead of looking on that top scale, we drop down one to find it just underneath in the 2.3 area. 2.36, I make that. So that is our geometric mean. That's root 9 of the product all those numbers which is 2300. Geometric mean 2.36, the arithmetic mean 3.64. So you can see that 2.36 is much closer to the modal value of that data set and it's kind of smoothed out the effect of having that 10 and the 12 in the data set. So there you go, very quick overview of those scales, how you can use them to raise a number by a power and also find the nth root of a number and how you can use it to calculate the geometric mean. Sorry if that was a bit hasty. If you like what you saw, please leave a comment. If you didn't like it, don't say anything because I'm very sensitive. Please have a look at my other slide rule videos and ask any questions you'd like to. Thank you.